you don't have patience. Steve Edmondson once said, I spent a lot of time researching things we ultimately don't do. How many nights, especially lately, since things have been a little choppy, where I sit here for a couple hours, go through a couple thousand stocks, and I can't find a setup to save my life. It used to bum me out because I feel like I need something for my work, right? But now I'm like, you know what? There's nothing to do. I don't have to put any capital into harm's way. So it doesn't bother me like it used to. And I also know that every night that I can't find a setup to save my life is putting me one step closer to finding a really good setup. And as I've said time and time again, and, and there's been more than one email. This poor guy's like, why do you have to pick on me every show? But a few years back, some guy said, hey, look, I'm taking a break. I, I'm, I'm going to stay subscribed to the service, but I don't see any setups for any while. I'm, I'm going to go do something else for a while. I'm going to go on vacation or whatever. And just take a break because I don't see any setups setting up anytime soon. You had a setup in two weeks. And like, you know what? I don't see any either. But I kept chipping away at it, chipping away at it. And the same day, later that day, I found two of the biggest winners of the year. Now, I don't know if he left for his vacation or what, or he took them or not, but there's a good chance that he missed them because he lost patience. Ken Lambert once said, doing nothing is harder than it looks. It is. We're not wired to sit on our arses. We're people of action. And I don't want to digress too far because we talked about it last week and probably the week before, especially the stock chart show. But I couldn't understand why people take such mediocre setups. Uh, very highly skilled, trained, intelligent people, doctors, lawyers, automatic transmission mechanics. And then a psychiatrist one day emails me and said, Dave, I got your answer. At least I think I do. It's because a doctor, a lawyer, or automatic transmission mechanic has to take whatever train wreck comes along. And he doesn't have the luxury of waiting for the perfect pitch, so to speak, the perfect client. It's, 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 it's a mechanic. I love the mechanic that I have. And uh, he's a sweet little guy. And uh, he was telling us, because we, we had a car once that we we kept alive forever. I, I would keep it alive as a Crown Vic. I would do a lot of the work myself because it was easy to work on. And then he would do work on it. And, and then one day he finally said, it's about time to let it go. We're like, all right, yeah, we know it's time. But he told a story that he had a uh, like a cousin who had a car, and he worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. It was just a piece of crap. He just kept it running, kept it running, kept it running. He's like, oh, my God, will he ever get rid of this thing? He said, hey, can we park it at your place to sell it? The guy's going to come pick it up. So the guy comes, picks it up. You know, He runs and starts and drives around the parking lot. He drives out of the parking lot, goes around the block, and then pulls it right back in. And he's like, okay, I need you to fix this, 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 this. And so it's like just when he thought he was getting rid of the car. But if he wants to stay a mechanic and stay in business, he has to work on that POS, right? So we can't sit around as, or you can't sit around as professionals, as a doctor, a lawyer, automatic transmission mechanic, and just cherry pick your clients and everything. And I, I don't want to throw anybody in the bus, but somebody recently was telling me a story about somebody they work with thinks that they can go in and cherry pick their clients. Well, he's not going to be successful very long in his business or he's not going to have a whole lot of business if he just does that but i don't want to digress too far imagine that charlie munger not a big fan of fundamentals and value investing and that kind of stuff for those who don't know charlie he's warren buffett's partner but uh he did write a good book on uh, charlie munger's what's it the wit and wisdom or something it's about this big i found it a couple days ago in my closet so i have to dig it out this is probably where I got this quote from. It takes character to sit there with all that cash and do nothing. I didn't get to where I am by going after mediocre opportunities. Well, that philosophy does work, obviously, with trend trading. And then, of course, the late, great Tom Petty says the waiting is the hardest part. Number five, logic doesn't often apply. I remember I recommended this stock and I don't remember exactly where, but it was a pullback. It looked pretty good. And I think it was probably this pullback way back here, right? And it just went up and up and up and up. And I remember when I recommended it, somebody emailed me and said, look, it's five times sales. This makes no sense. 
so many shares are controlled by powers that be paid under two bucks. Well, I've never thought about that before, but that's interesting, okay? So he basically confused the issue with facts and then the stock just shot up afterwards and doubled or more than doubled. So the market didn't really care about those things. In fact, I often say, and, and I guess after I said this once, somebody said you pretty much already did, but one day I'm gonna design a system where the company has to have no fundamentals or rotten fundamentals, but the technicals have to be there. And I guess I pretty much have, because a lot of these companies, they wouldn't know earnings, uh, an earning, is that a way to say it? If it hit them in the ass. But they might go on to double or triple in the meantime. So don't confuse the issue with facts. And that's a hard part because everybody wants to interject logic into a lot of this stuff. And a lot of times there is no logic. Markets are based on the emotions of the participants. And as I preach, wrap your head around your own emotional behavior. And that helps you to wrap your head around the emotional behavior of others. Recently, I've been getting a little chewed up, like I've been saying throughout this presentation. First trade of the mini has losses, right? <laughs> <laughs> something you've never heard right and it's like i've been a little gun shy on especially on like the ancillary trades okay so maybe i'm waiting for a little bit more follow-through maybe i'm taking somewhere i might have been a little bit more excited to take them in the past so this reasoning has nothing to do with the fundamentals or anything else it just has to do with the fact that i've been getting beat up a little bit so i want to make sure that i'm choosing my spots extra carefully so the more you wrap your head around your own emotions in trading and in life the more emotional you realize you are okay take your personality test too by the way the easier it's it's going to be to wrap your head around your own feelings and why you're not following your plan but more importantly, to understand how emotional the rest of the market is if you are a microcosm of it, and you are a microcosm of it. And even if you're a small trader, sometimes you can affect the market, okay? Let's say you hit the market, well, that that your price becomes the ass price, and that, that extra little penny might have been all it takes to trigger off somebody else's stop and so you actually had a little bearing, believe it or not, it might be like kind of a butterfly effect type of thing, believe it or not. But even as a small trader, sometimes you can do those things. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't realize, the one reason you, you don't want a loss and you will avoid a loss at all costs, even though Basically, trading is being willing to take your lumps, take your losses, get out the way. You know, if you could take your lumps and losses and keep them relatively limited and then allow yourself to have somewhat unlimited gains, then you've you've gained the system, you've beat the system, and you'll be a success. But losses make you feel really bad. And this is where the neurology comes in and I heard this from Janice Dorn. I've also heard it from a lot of the people. The brain registers loss is 2.5 times more intensely than it feels gains. And that's part of the gambler's ruin. ruin. And uh, Mrs. Dorn referenced somebody else's article where the guy talked about the gambler's ruin. And in such, it's like you're constantly chasing that high. You feel really bad about a loss okay and you feel okay about a gain it feels good don't get me wrong but it's proportionally you're going to feel much more pain from that loss and that's the gambler's ruin because the gambler ends up chasing that high that high of that that win okay and it's hard to it's hard to get there so people feel roughly twice as bad about a loss as a pleasure that comes from an equal gain People go to great lengths to avoid pain. And that's Kennerman and Tversky who said these things. And I think it was Kennerman wrote Thinking Fast and Slow, but it, it's a culmination of all the research that he and um, Tversky did today together. 
Number seven, we like to deal in exacts. I get emails all the time, not from more established people like you people here tonight, but where exactly did you do this? Why exactly is this? Why exactly? The word exact comes up probably more often than any other word. And, you know, once again, it's like once you start quoting the Kahneman and Tversky, and I hope I got the names right, I should know by now. Man is a deterministic device thrown into a probabilistic universe. That's a mouthful right there, right? That's a lot. That's that's something to really take in. And trading is very probabilistic <laughs> at best, right? But we want to we want to deal with exacts, and trading is just you can't deal with exacts. Now, I actually found this slide and it really kind of fits in with what I'm talking about tonight is from a psychological perspective, we're just scratching the surface. And again, the need to be right, we have a strong need to be right, especially me who has 0% in agreeableness. And you're probably thinking like, well, I don't know if I want to hang out with you, Dave, you might be an a-hole. No, I just, I just won't argue, <laughs> especially if you're buying the beer, I, you know, whatever you say is right, you know? <laughs> we have a need to take action because the real world and trading world, two different worlds, that's a whole speech in and of itself. But in the real world, you got to save some lives, okay? Even though the life might not be too easy to save or it might not even, you might not be able to save the life, but you, you better give it a shot, right? You can't sit around and wait for a healthy person to come along and lay up. You're still healthy. Good job. <laughs> We have this need for certainty, exacts, uh, and it's it's doesn't work that way, right? Need to avoid pain. You know, the getting to back to the need for certainty. A lot of emotional people out there, right? Okay, and they. I thought I'd do a presentation about quoting Marion Marion McClellan, which is the late mom of Tom McClellan. But people, everyone uses timing in their investments, or everyone uses timing in their trading. In this case. Some people buy when they have money, some people sell when they need money, and others use far more sophisticated methods. So I think a lot of the pandemic buying came from people sitting around at home, bored, the the checks. I think the I, I, one of you guys showed me the research or the, or the stats on it, but Robinhood accounts like tripled in value. The assets under management, so to speak, or how, I don't know how you say it, they're not under management, whatever, assets in the roof, after the government sent out all these checks, all these kids started trading their money. So they had money. And, you know, what does that have to do with anything? How is that logical with the economics or the earnings or the situation in Nigeria? So your need for certainty is not going to be fulfilled because of the emotions and all these other things that could come into the market and cause you grief and screw up a perfectly good trade. As Mark Douglas said, all it takes is one a-hole to screw up a perfectly good trade. And you just wrap your head around that. I was speaking to some day traders years ago and I, I didn't know that they shorted the parabolics. And, uh, <laughs> And you know, I, I said, well, well, Douglas said all it takes is one a-hole to screw up a perfectly good trade. It's, it's nice to meet you. And again, we also have a need to avoid pain. We'll do anything to avoid pain. I'm trying to think, uh, God give me the strength to face a fact, even though it might slay me. Who's that? That's um, something, it's like he's got a three word name something or he's like a, a warrior or something it'll come to me hopefully <laughs> by the time i do the editing we also have a need for positive feedback and we have a lot of needs we're very we're very 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 needy and not to last week at band camp you but annie dukes written a couple of good books Specifically, well, there's only two that I know of, but that relate to trading at least. 
One is thinking in bets. And in that she talks about a lot about separating luck from skill. And sometimes we do stupid things and they turn out right, whether it's in life or in trading. And we've learned nothing, okay? We've learned that let's do that stupid thing again because we got that positive result. And in her second book, or the second book related to trading or somewhat related to trading, how to decide, she calls that resulting. And a lot of people take the results and work backwards and think, oh yeah, well this this was a great trade because it worked. And, and that's just not how it works. All right, I often show live examples and sometimes old examples like tonight, showed you both. Those come straight from the archives for the trading service. If you're new to the trading service, come down here to see the recent services. And if you wanna see the archives longer term, they're not behind a firewall. And usually I update them, lately I've been updating, updating them fairly quickly because there hasn't been a whole lot of new trades. So you can go in and see what's been happening lately. DaveLander.com slash archives.